The Blue Eddy AC200L power station is a pretty beefy power station for that mid-range market. It's got a 2500 watt inverter built into it. It's got 2048 watt hours of battery capacity. And as I was doing my spec review video, I started wondering if I lost power, how long could this Blue Eddy power station supply power to some of my essential loads. I kind of want to simulate a power outage from the standpoint of I want the Blue Eddy to supply power to my fridge, my freezer in the basement, my internet, maybe I'll have it charge a phone, and then throw a lamp on it as well, just to kind of test out, you know, how long could those things run off of a fully charged AC200L. So let's find out. So for the purpose of the test, um, it's nighttime. I'm not hooking up solar to it. I wanna see how long this could run just off of a fully charged battery. Now, you can expand these batteries and add, I believe, two expansion batteries on this to take you from two kilowatt hours to eight kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So really, you can increase this by four times the amount. And then if you had solar hooked into it, depending on your loads, you could supply power to different things indefinitely if you had enough sun. So let's get this thing set up. I'll show you the different devices that we're gonna power. And let's see how long this thing can actually last. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the internet system that I have. It's probably more advanced than most people. It's a UniFi system, so you've got multiple components all tied in, you know, cable modem, You've got your gateway, cloud key, uh, PoE switch, and all that stuff is coming down here and being powered off of this little UPS, which is gonna be tied into this, this orange extension cord here and go back to the Blue Eddy. And then next to where we have the Blue Eddy, we've got our frigid air freezer, of which there's no power right now because I pulled the plug. And I don't know if you can see it, but the amp rating is 115 volts at two amps maximum. Come through the house, follow the yellow extension cord all the way to the kitchen to where our fridge is. And this is a fridge freezer combo, pretty full. And if we look at it, it's a Whirlpool a 6.5 amp max draw. And last but not least, I have our lamp here. Let me see what this is. It's one of those Philips smart bulbs, 9.5 watts. And so this is actually programmed to turn on and off at different times of the day automatically. So I've got everything wired into the Blue Eddy. Yellow extension cord is the fridge upstairs. Brown cord here is my lamp. Right here is my freezer. And then this yellow cord here is actually the extension cord that goes over to my internet hardware. I know there's a lot of different factors regarding loads like this. You're going to have the type of fridge, freezer, lamp, internet, hardware, whatever, you're gonna have, how full is your fridge and freezer? You know, that's going to play into how long things run as well. This is a strictly a test for my personal uh, curiosity just to see how well it can run, but it'll give you an idea of, of how long this power station could run these kind of loads. So let's turn on the power station. We are at 100%. And let's turn on the AC and see what happens. And there's the click. And turned on our lamp. 
So currently right now, because fridge and freezer was unplugged, they have to get back down to their, their cool temperature. So everything is running at 283 watts total. And you can see that the power station says about 6.7 hours total. Now that should cycle up and down based on how these different loads turn on and off. But it is currently 747 at night. So I guess we're gonna see if in the morning, <laughs> how long this actually ran for. So I know somebody's gonna ask, and I was actually curious as well, what's the power draw on my internet hardware? And so this is currently drawn 61, 62 watts for all my hardware. It's really gonna give me a good idea of a 2000 watt power station. If, if you lost power late afternoon, early evening to where your lights have to start coming on and you really just need those basic necessities powered just so that you're not losing what's in your fridge and your freezer. And if you gotta sit around your house, you know, have the internet going so you can watch something on your phone, whatever. So I'll be curious to see, the timer has already changed. We're at 7.2 hours right now remaining as opposed to 6.7. Oh, and I almost forgot, I've got a dead phone. So let's plug that in as well. Turn on DC, oh, excuse me. Turn on USB, plug in the phone. All right, we'll see you in a few hours. Well, it's another new day. And if you can tell by my shirt, maybe you know what day it is. But we ran our power station last night and I think we started at around 7.30ish. I was checking it at various times throughout the evening and things were still moving really, really well. I think by the time I went to bed around midnight, it was, 50%. And then when I woke up this morning around eight, I grabbed my phone, take a look at it. No internet connection. Like, okay. So that means that we lost power at some point throughout the night. But how long did it run? So I put a charge back on this to get it up to 1%. We'll turn on the AC connection. And we'll take a look at together at how long this actually ran. 11 hours and 55 minutes. That's awesome. Assuming that I remember correctly that it started around 7.30. So it was only off for maybe a half an hour. <laughs> so that was kind of a fun test. If we look back at the loads that we had running, we had my main fridge freezer, which is not, an Energy Star, Energy Certified, anything like that. It's probably 12 years old. I want to say that said that it was like 760, 780 watts maximum. We have the freezer downstairs, which is new, maybe two years old. Uh, Energy Star, I want to say that uses maybe 230 watts maximum. My internet hardware, we looked at that. And that was using 60 to 65 watts continuous. We had the nine watt light bulb, which ran from 7.30 till I think that automatically turns off at midnight. And then I was charging my cell phone for a few hours at, you know, five, six watts. So, I mean, it really gives you an idea of output runtime for these different appliances. Now, your house may be different. You may have all Energy Star devices. You may not. You're more than likely not gonna have the internet equipment that I have. So you could probably significantly reduce that output, which is again, a constant load. There's a lot of different variables for everybody's home. It also gave me a good idea that I got have a 12 hour runtime, roughly. I could adjust that based on you know, paring down some of my internet hardware, but I could also look at adding the expansion packs to this unit, which again, I said, I believe you can go up to eight kilowatts. So they've got two, you could put two 3000 watt hour expansion batteries on this pack to take it up to eight kilowatts. So if I had 12 hours out of two, then 
you know, taking it up to the eight kilowatts would give me just shy of two full days of runtime. And then you take into account if you add 1200 watts of solar into this power station to help recharge your loads because your loads are fluctuating. So even if you just had this power station alone and you're using, you know, 200 watts out of 1200 watts of solar, you're, you're going to be able to charge this back up with 800 watts while still providing power to the loads. So you're really going to be able to, to recharge this in just a few hours. Lots of possibilities, lots of options, just a, a fun little test giving me an idea of, of how much I can run and for how long. I'm going to have to let you go. I've got to clean up some extension cords that are kind of strewn throughout the house right now. So y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.